Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jean Zubrzycki. I'm director of the, of the Copernicus Center for Polish uh, Studies, and I have the pleasure today to uh, welcome you to this lecture, How to Write History from Below and Why It Matters, a conversation with Adam Neszczyński about his people's history of Poland, or to use the Polish title, uh, Ludowa Historia Polski. And I'm sure we'll be talking about how to translate actually that important mm. term, Ludowa uh, Historia Polski. Um, to tell you a little bit about how the event will proceed, um, Professor Leszczyński will present his book, key issues in, in the making of the book, why he wrote, rewrote Polish history from uh, a people's perspective. Uh, and it will be followed by conversation with uh, Brian Porter Schutz um, of the University of Michigan. Um, and you will have an opportunity to ask questions directly to either Professor Leszczyński and or uh, Professor uh, Porter Schutz using the question button at the bottom right of your screen. Um, Professor Porter Schutz will then select questions and pose them on your behalf to uh, Professor Leszczyński. Uh, so let me introduce both our speakers for today. I know, um, so Adam Leszczyński is a journalist, sociologist, and historian specializing on social history and historical sociology, teaching courses on journalism and the history of Poland at the University of Social Sciences and Humanities in Warsaw. He's a co-founder of OCO Press or OCO uh, dot Press, a nonprofit investigative journalist and fact checking project and website, very important if you don't know it already, uh, which was created to preserve freedom of speech and secure access to information in Poland. Uh, Professor Leszczyński is a frequent contributor to OCO Press, writing about Polish politics and history and the law and justice government's politics of memory. We're very happy to have him today to discuss his book, which became almost of an instant uh, hit and bestseller uh, book uh, in Poland. Brian Perderschutz is Arthur Turnow Professor of History at the University of Michigan. He's the author of uh, Poland in the Modern World Beyond Martyrdom, which was also translated uh, in Polish and appeared, I think, last year, Brian. Um, and it's called, if I recall, uh, uh, what is the title? I, I forgot. How Brian. can you try to cry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, also a controversial uh, title um, in Poland. He has also authored Faith and Fatherland, Catholicism, Modernity in Poland, published by Oxford University Press in 2001, and the now classic book, When Nationalism Began to Hate, Imagining Modern Polish Politics in the 19th Century, published by Oxford also in 2000, and which was also translated into Polish. He's currently researching a book on the origins of neoliberal economic thought in communist Poland. And so we're really happy to have um, both historians here in dialogue about uh, Professor Leszczyński's book, Ludowa Historia Polski. Welcome to both. And thank you for, for being with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind invitation. It's an honor. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. So should I start? Yes, please do. Let's start with my presentation. Uh, I'll try not to be boring. Uh, so the subject of my uh, of uh, of today's uh, conversation is how to write history from below and why it matters. And of course, uh, I will try to give my own answer to this question. Um, speaking about my book, it's not the only one answer. I will try to. Uh, uh, I, I, I had to do some uh, very specific choices in writing about this subject, and um, a lot of people didn't agree with any of, well, with some of them or most of them. Uh, so uh, it's just a, 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 a very, very particular, very personal, let's say, very personal perspective. Um, let's try. Uh, okay. Okay. So, uh, 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 Let's start from, from the book. It's a grand synthesis. It's a thousand years of Polish history retold as a one book. Uh, it uses very diverse sources like diaries, private letters, poetry, uh, legal uh, documents, uh, press, oral history, 
most of the sources were already published. Uh, there was a very little archival, archival work done um, by design. That was that was the. Uh, um, I will come back to this later. It's a it's a pretty long book. It has almost seven hundred pages. Uh, pretty exhausting for a lot of a lot of people. Um, I, I, I still think it's too long. Um, the original uh, idea was uh, to, to limit to perhaps 400, 500 pages. I, I'm also going to tell why uh, just a bit later. Uh, it is. Uh, um, it was a, a, a bestseller, a national bestseller, which is, of course, very. I'm very happy about it as an author. Uh, Sixty thousand copies sold as for today, uh, which is in on the Polish market in the territory of a very popular novel. Actually, um, it, it's uh, it, and it, 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 it. There was a very uh, a long debate about the book, not only this one, because there were also some other similar books coming out at the same time. Uh, uh, so, and it's very complicated debate, uh, which started after publication. I will try to, to say something about it uh, uh, later. Uh, so what was the general idea? What's the focus of the book? Mm. Uh, and so the main, the main focus is an economic extraction as a, a, a history of extractive social institutions uh, in, in the Polish society and its evolution. So the focus of the book is pretty narrow despite its size and, and, and ambition. Uh, um, some people had a problem with this. I, we'll talk about it also later. Uh, so the second, uh, the second field, the second area is a repression and popular resistance to the extractive processes and extractive institutions in the Polish history. And the third is the discourse of domination uh, uh, it's uh, so the, the the different justifications uh, uh, provided for social order, uh, and in uh, most mostly the, uh, and history of its evolution. Um, uh, and uh, the fourth point is the social. I, I I propose a certain social historical model of emancipation, popular emancipation in Poland. It's uh, it's. Uh, 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 also, uh, we'll come to to this a bit later. Um, so, uh, the narrative, how the book is written. So, uh, the book is is written. In, in, it is very. It's it's perhaps the easiest to imagine uh, the the narrative as a pyramid, uh, with uh, each level, which with each level accessible to different kind of reader. So on the bottom is an anecdote. There are many interesting stories illustrating my point. Um, and a lot of people stopped there uh, by design. That was, that was my idea, actually. So I, wanted, I really wanted to make this book accessible for non-professionals. Uh, the second level is a history of evolution of extractive uh, institutions, uh, social uh, institutions. Uh, in the long run, I mean, centuries, not only decades, but centuries of Polish history. Um, and a lot of people were surprised that uh, the society changed and the extraction uh, uh, of resources from the, from, from the population by the allies remained. Uh, uh, there is also, also a certain theory of emancipation and model. We'll come back to this. Uh, and the fourth level, which is which was all interesting mostly to professionals, I think it's a methodological critique of, 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 of something I call nationalist patriarchal narrative uh, of uh, uh, his, his style of writing uh, um, of, of Polish history. So uh, this, these four levels, each of them for a different kind of uh, of, uh, of reader and they, I, I, I had to integrate them in one consistent narrative, which was perhaps the most difficult task I had as a writer uh, in my life so far. And um, the language. Okay, I, 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 I tried to make, I really tried to, to make this book attractive for an, a, a person from educated person in Poland. So I had to make it not too easy, not too technical. 
uh, nice to read. Uh, I, 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 I try to avoid technical jargon. Um, um, so uh, be you know sophisticated enough to be accepted by professionals and uh, not too difficult for a person who is not a professional. It was a very narrow, it was a very narrow path. I'm not sure if it, if I succeeded or well, uh, uh, there are some places which I think I could 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 have been written differently. I think in this book, well, but it's 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 a different it's a different uh, discussion. So uh, the structure of, of, of chapters is, is uh, usually similar. So I start from anecdote or anecdotes. Then there is a, a, a certain explanation and data. Um, and then uh, a, a, a synthesis. It's a very, so it, so it starts from a narrow perspective on a person, on a situation from the past, and then it zooms out uh, to uh, allowing the reader to, to look from the perspective on, on the issue. Uh, I also wanted to include a lot of quotations uh, from, from original documents. So uh, I wanted the people from the past, living in the past, to speak uh, uh, in the book. And this, I, I think, was one of the most difficult decisions for me to make, um, because the, especially the old Polish language was difficult for many readers. Um, uh, and the oldest, you know, the parts of the book which uh, concern the oldest, you know, it's Middle Ages, they were very difficult for, for many people. I heard the complaints uh, about this. Uh, why, is, why such care about language? Because I thought that hermetic language of, of professional historians of, and professional social sciences. Uh, um, often serves most to, to exclude non-professionals from the debate. And I, I wanted this book to be as inclusive as, as possible. Uh, it's, it's probably no surprise for, for, for Americans, uh, so this style uh, for American uh, historians, uh, but it was, uh, uh, it was something new for many readers in Poland. So po I think Polish historical books are mostly uh, are very often very difficult to read and very difficult to, even more difficult to, to enjoy reading them. Uh, and uh, lots of people were surprised that, that it's possible to write differently. Um, uh, and of course, there's always a risk of sounding unprofessional uh, if your language is too, too nice and you, you always risk uh, sounding unprofessional. Um, uh, what was the, what is the added value, added value of my book in, from my perspective? Um, so uh, the most important point, it was reviving of the past, which was, I think, uh, uh, often deliberately repressed in the nationalist narrative. So the story of internal conflict over redistribution, internal power relations in a Polish society, um, it's often avoided in the in the Polish historiography, uh, and a, one of the most, uh, let's say, uh, um, most. Uh, uh, so, so you risk if if you write about them, you risk uh, being a, of you know, accusation of of Marxism or neo-Marxism, uh, uh, which is supposedly something 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 very very scary and. Uh, and, and you should one should avoid it. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so uh, that, that's one that's 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 the most important point. The second, I think, uh, area which in which my book has some added value to the debate is the, the model of emancipation. We'll come back to this in a moment. The third is, uh, is a, a long history of, of the social institutions in Poland, um, which were devoted and built to extract resources from the population and redistribute it, to redistribute them then upwards to the allies of the society. Um, so, um, and the, this continuity and also the continuity of the discourse, which used, was used to, to justify them, it was also surprising for many, for many readers. Right? 
Uh, and the fourth area, you know, and fourth area of, and this is something I, I, I was told by readers. I got more than 200, 200 letters from, from, from readers, uh, from very diff, from very diverse group of people, from historians, from uh, just average people, from scientists, very, from artists, very different group, very diverse group of, of readers. And a lot of people felt the need to share with me as an author uh, their impressions. Uh, a lot of them said, thank you. Uh, mm, I come from peasant family and my grandparents were poor peasants in Poland. Um, so, mm, and, and this book gives them justice. So, and uh, it was not my goal, uh, but a lot of people, a lot of readers very often had this, uh, uh, this, 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 kind, this kind of reaction. Um, okay, uh, what is my understanding of, this is about methodological choices actually, what is my understanding of historical process? So in this book, uh, economy is seen as a key to history. Uh, and it's not about class struggle. It's uh, um, I, I don't think I use this this word uh, this this phrase. Uh, uh, but it's uh, the, the the economy is a key to explaining historical events. So it's not about politics. It's not about kings. It's not about generals. Uh, there is very little about the wars and uh, uh, partitions, uh, um, but a lot about the, 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 the structure of, uh, of income, of uh, the, the redistribution, uh, the power relations, uh, the class attitudes, and so on. So, it, it, so that's, uh, that's the perspective. And uh, the core of the narrative is a history of, of conflict. At the core, this narrative is a history of conflict focused on the redistribution of resources, uh, which made old school Marxists happy. They were not so happy from other reasons, but, but, but this, this, this part was, uh, 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 they, they enjoyed. Um, so um, another assumption I made is that people uh, that the, the people tend to do tend to do rational economic choices, uh, um, and this is very much taken from the classical uh, uh, economics. Uh, and uh, a lot of modern Marxists had the problem with this choice. So. Uh, for them, the narrative should be more about the power and oppression uh, and less about money. Um, so the, 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 the focus was slightly different. They should be, should, it should be slightly different from their perspective. Uh, and the state, uh, institutions of state, uh, uh, either the Polish state or the, uh, the, the, this, uh, during the partitions, the, the empires like the Russian empire or or Austro-Hungarian empire is seen mostly as a vehicle of redistribution. So it's also a very narrow perspective, maybe too narrow. Um, and it was also shocking for a lot of people that you can describe Polish Republic, pre-war Poland, for example, or communist Poland as a vehicle of redistribution, uh, not, like, uh, not as a national community uh, in which everybody or almost everybody felt uh, at home. Um, the main, the main, okay, the, so, so as I use a very, uh, a very, um, a, a very strict division between the elites and the people in the book and a very, it's, it's, it's a dichotomy. Um, and the place where one belongs is from my perspective determined by the functional place uh, the person has in the structure of redistribution. So, uh, um, and of course, if you have such a, a strict division, uh, a lot of groups and a lot of people tend to do not, tend, tend to not, they don't fit very well. Uh, 
that was one of the main criticism of the book. Uh, uh, and I think it's mostly, I think it's a lot of this criticism is, is right. So, uh, but it was necessary for me, this strict division between, you know, the, the, the drawing the line between the allies and the people, it was very, it was necessary to, to construct a model and to, to make the narrative consistent. And uh, so uh, who are the people in this book? I mean, it's people's history. So who are the people? So there are different definitions. In, and these are the definitions which were made by different authors writing about similar subject on sim about similar subject. Uh, so you can uh, understand this and this, they overlap. I mean, all these definitions I, you can see on the screen, they overlap uh, mostly. It's bottom 90%, people who are governed, people who are living from the work of their own hands, uh, people for whom the, uh, the resources, I mean, by resources, I mean labor, money, and uh, or like, you know, food were taken, extracted by the, uh, by the, by the machinery of state and by the lights. Um, so as I, as I noted, this, this division is, uh, uh, is problematic between, because it reduces complexity and of course society and the past is very complex. Uh, but I felt it's, it, it was necessary to, to streamline the narrative and to make the book, uh, to, to make the, the point, um, to make my point clear. Um, there is a problem with the sources, as always, when you try to look at the history from below, especially the, the so, and it's pretty obvious. Here is the, you can see on the screen the quote from, from the introduction written by Marceli Handelsman, very famous Polish historian, very smart guy. Um, and uh, he, in 1907, uh, he published the first uh, uh, diary of memoir, you know, memoirs of, of a Polish peasant, uh, Kazimierz Daczyński life story originally from written in 1838, I think. Uh, and in his introduction, Handelsman wrote this passage. No one today is examines labor relations solely on the basis of the da data provided by factory owners. Because one understands perfectly well that subjectivism, if not straightforward falsification, must color all the reports. As uh, says Handelsman, and uh, he notes that in, in the field of the history of peasants, uh, the researcher has only mostly, almost, 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 mm, 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 a, a lot of sources were produced by Allied and uh, uh, of course reflects their interests, uh, values and point of, point of view. So uh, reading of the sources as, as I had to read the sources very often, very carefully to um, to try to, uh, to to separate, maybe sometimes unsuccessfully, um, the point of view of the lights from the uh, from the from the people's history. Uh, we can discuss this also uh, in detail later. Uh, the model of modern Polish politics. That's, um, so, um, so the model, the model of Polish, Polish, po modern Polish politics and the model of the process of emancipation. I mean, by emancipation, I understand, uh, uh, you know, the widening the, the, the power and, uh, uh, and autonomy of, of the lower social, uh, 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 lower social cl working classes in Poland. Um, it, it's, it's in my opinion, it's based on the, on the allied competition uh, for power. And so you had allies both, and this means by this, I mean, Polish allies and or imperial allies, which compete for control of resources. And of course, these resources are extracted from the population. And to win this competition, every few years, every few years, every, you know, Two decades, you have a point of, of uh, uh, you have uh, uh, 
a conflict in which uh, the allied can change. Uh, so uh, to win this competition, uh, the, the allied has to, you know, upcoming aspiring people aspiring to be the next allied of the, of the country, they had to promise something meaningful to the people to gain popular support. And uh, this offer always had both economic and uh, component and identity component, let's say. And uh, by this, you can, in my opinion, you can explain all the important dates, important flexing points uh, in the Polish history starting in 1794, Kościuszko's uprising, um, up to 2015, I mean, the last elections, which was won by the, uh, the, the, the election, which was won by uh, Law and Justice, uh, uh, Law and Justice Party. Uh, and the thing about these promises, uh, which are made by the, uh, by the Allies, it's that they are never kept. So uh, David Ost once wrote about the, the I think it was David, um, who wrote about um, uh, about the, the, the treason of, of Polish solidarity, which was supposed to, to fight for workers and after 1980, and they converted to neoliberal doctrine in 1989. Um, and from David's perspective, it was treason. Um, and it, 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 was not, it, it was not an accident, it was a norm in Polish history. So the Allies, once they get power, they get into power. They never keep their promises, but the promises remain. I mean, they, they remain in the debate, they remain on the table, and in, 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 at some part in the next cycle or two cycles later, they are getting uh, the finally getting realized. That was the case of a land reform. Um, that was the case of emancipation of serfs. Many examples in the recent history. Um, so that's that's the model, and so it's 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 a, it's a kind of a dialectic process. Uh, it's very painful. Also, lots of violence, lots of conflict. Mm. Uh, but but it's hopeful. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it, it, it's it's getting better in the end. Finally, sometimes after many decades, sometimes. Um, okay, a few words about reception and criticism. I got, as I said, I got hundreds of letters. Uh, there was more than twenty reviews uh, in the, and some of more of them are are coming in, in the professional journals. Um, and uh, I, I, I was a target of a lot of aggressive attacks in the, in the media by historians, uh, conservative historians mostly. Uh, one of them, a uh, very prominent uh, historian, Andrzej Nowak, accused me of being a traitor to the Polish nation. Uh, I, I was told that um, I'm destroying the, uh, um, the um, solidarity and unity, uh, uh, that I'm Marxist or neo-Marxist, and this book is not very much Marxist. I mean, uh, um, we can talk about this also later if you want. Uh, another point of criticism that there is not enough uh, 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 original documents. I mean, original that means documents I found in the, myself personally in the archives, and uh, I don't really understand what's the point. I mean, uh, lots of sources are published, and if I if I was to uh, find all of them personally, I it it it, it would make my work impossible. I mean, this kind of project. Uh, can be only uh, uh, made uh, uh, can be only finished when you try to, to to base when you base on the work of other scholars. Right? Um, I was also it was also said that this book is ideological uh, because there are probably there are some un books on history which are not ideological. And uh, one, uh, uh, and uh, of course, that I'm incompetent. 
um, incompetent neo-Marxist who hates Polish nation. That's the, that's the quote. So that's me. That's me. Uh -huh. um, um, but of course, the, the, there there are also a lot of professional. Uh, there are many. There are many. Uh, uh, I will tell you in a moment what I think is missing from the book. Um, so. Um, uh, a, a, a lot. Uh, uh, there are also many valid points, I think, especially when professionals in, in, in the reviews, which are in the professional professional journals, they are much more balanced and a lot of them are actually pretty kind. Uh, uh, thank you, Brian. Um, so another is uh, another another form of criticism, but you don't you, you don't write about, and there is a long list of, of things I don't write about. Well, one has to make a selection. And a lot of people did not agree with all the choices I made, which is fine, I think. Uh, uh, but you don't quote, and there is a list of, 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 of historians, of scholars. Well, you cannot quote everyone. Um, uh, and uh, some people from the radical left told me that I don't quote enough popular voices. I mean, people from the from the bottom. I mean, from, from the working classes. I don't agree with this. Uh, I did. I even did the statistics. They were not convinced. They were not convinced. Um, okay, what is missing? Uh, a lot, I, as, I said, as I said, a lot, and uh, 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 there is, uh, uh, so the, the narrative is focused mostly on central ethnic Polish lands. There is a lot about minorities, especially Jewish issue, anti-Semitism is, is a very, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a very much present topic in the book. But still, when you look at this from the geographic point of view, it's, it's most of the examples, most of the stories, they, they come from the from the central ethnic Polish lands, um, and of course it's it's just a, a part of the story. So the periphery, like Silesia or eastern uh, eastern Polish lands, should be more present in the book. There are still they they, they, they are in it, but it's they are underrepresented in the book. Uh, there is not enough about uh, the world wars and its social significance, which I think it's it's a mistake, uh, my mistake. Um, mm, uh, and the narrative stops at 1981, um, which is also valid criticism, um, but uh, I just couldn't. Uh, 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 the, out, the author was exhausted. That's that's the that's the only answer I have. To this criticism, uh, there is not enough on uh, on uh, about Catholic Church um, and its economic role, and not enough about popular imagination. So not enough folk songs, not enough uh, folk tales, um, which is, I think, also valid. Uh, in part, valid criticism. Okay, so, so that's that's uh, that's uh, that's all from me. Uh, mm. Thank you for thank you very much for listening. Um, just let me let me stop this. Okay, thank you very much. Well, thank 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 you. That was a, a very interesting uh, presentation of of this extremely interesting book. Uh, I just want to before I you know ask any questions, I just want to just re-emphasize that uh, that this this book really is, in my opinion probably the most important uh, work of history to come out of Poland in the last quarter century. Uh, and uh, I, I really mean that sincerely. This is, uh, it, it's, it's not necessary to have a new archival finding in order to write an important book. And this is, this book is, is, is proof of that. Um, I think that a lot of American, you know, a, a lot of uh, Americans might not uh, easily appreciate the uh, the the importance of the intervention that you make in relocating the focal point of uh, of Polish history to uh, to to the masses, broadly speaking, uh, it is something that 
you know, while we also have our, you know, our, our deep, deep problems with our historiography, uh, to, and that puts it mildly, uh, there is a tradition dating back to Howard Zinn, who you explicitly, uh, uh, you know, talk about uh, as a model, uh, the, uh, the, the idea of, of, of sort of history from below, but that, uh, you know, introducing that to, or rather, let's say reintroducing it, because certainly there was a a trend during the communist era to give a sort of history from below, but reintroducing that uh, tradition in in new in new form is just incredibly valuable and can't can't be overstated. Um, one of the thank you very much, Brian. You're very kind. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's nothing. The the um, the the real benefit of the book is precisely, I think, the uh, way in which you provide this overarching view that allows us to make a certain interpretive sense of Polish history across eras and across contexts. Uh, now, as 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 you said in your in your remarks, uh, this requires the establishment of a certain dialectical. Uh, although not Marxist, uh, model uh, that uh, that can be applied uh, usefully as an interpretive lens. Um, and that's the benefit and value of the book. Of course, as you also said in, in your remarks just now, that uh, that requires, um, you know, uh, uh, suddenly pushing to the back work, to the back some of the uh, some of the distinctions from various uh, you know that with within this concept of lud the people uh, and, uh, and 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 that's really what I'd like to um, I'd like to, to push you to uh, talk a little bit more about the way your overall model uh, uh, can be enriched uh, by talking about some of the uh, some of the distinctions that uh, that appear at the at the margins of it, and the first one I want I want to bring up, and I'm I think this will be of particular interest to our listeners here. In the first big chunk of the book, where you're dealing with uh, the history before the partitions, um, well, into the 19th century, and talking about serfdom, you you make an I think a very interesting and provocative uh, argument that slavery and serfdom are two categories that really need to be studied alongside of each other. Uh, that, uh, that the parallels between these institutions are, uh, are, are quite important, especially in terms of the lived experience of the people subjected to them. Um, as you know well, that's a controversial uh, you know, sentiment. Uh, and so I wondered if you could talk a little bit more about uh, why you think that this is so. Um, okay, let's start from the from the controversy. Um, so, from the nationalist point of view, I mean, the, from the point of view of classical Polish historiography, uh, it's a heresy. It's a heresy. So, uh, a Polish, a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, uh, Polish historians are convinced that serfdom and slavery were something completely different. And from my, and of course, there were many significant uh, institutional differences. Um, which are, I think, explored in detail in, the, in this book. Um, but the, the, the overall, I think, they, 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 they are very, uh, uh, they, they are simply defensive. I mean, uh, they try to defend uh, national history uh, and they try to, um, to say that we were something, somehow a better society uh, than, for example, Southern, uh, uh, Southern United States. I mean, uh, uh, the, the, so, the, so, so, so one of this, uh, so, so that's the point of, that's the perspective of the, of the standard, let's say, Polish historical narrative. Uh, and uh, in, I think uh, in, in reality uh, that the experience between, uh, um, uh, the, the experience as much as we can say about it um, was actually pretty similar. So the serf, uh, was not a free person. Um, it, it could be sub, It could be executed at will um, uh, for at least a few three or four centuries, um, and uh, uh, serfs were killed uh, by their masters, even if that was illegal up to mid nineteenth century. We have many examples of this. Uh, so you had a very uh, uh, so so um, even when when the masters lo lo lose their formal power, 
over uh, life and death, they, they were still executing it uh, in, in reality. So uh, um, there is also a, a very valid point, actually, uh, uh, it's, it's your point, not mine, because you made it in your review of my book. Uh, so that, that the, the discourse of, of the difference between the, the lords and the serfs was actually structurally very similar to the discourse uh, uh, um, about slavery in the United States. So for you, uh, as, as you wrote in the, in the review, uh, for you it was obvious as an American reader, and, uh, um, uh, and uh, I think you were right, uh, and this, is, this was the point I, I missed. Mm, uh, so, um, so you had the, the, the similar structure of power, and the similar discourse of the difference between masters, I mean, physical difference, biological difference, gen genetic. Well, they didn't use the word, but that was the idea. They were different people. I mean, the, the serfs, the peasants, and the masters were the lords, uh, were different, uh, different nations. The, 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 that, words, uh, that word was sometimes used. So the masters were brave, the masters were uh, freedom loving, uh, uh, they, were, mm, mm, they, they were fighters, uh, um, um, and they, they were, you know, they, they had a very political minds, uh, and the serfs were um, narrow minded, uh, timid, uh, lazy, uh, and they needed direction and protection. and. Uh, Mm, uh, so they had to work under supervision of uh, uh, of the of, of the lords. So and and this is actually remarkably similar to to the stuff you can write uh, you can read in in the uh, different uh, books defending slavery in, slavery in the 18th and 19th century in the in the United States, for example, but also in France, mm, which I checked uh, 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 recently. Mm, uh, so um, uh, I think that's the answer to your question. So we have a question from the uh, from 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 the audience. Uh, this is from uh, Mason Bright. Uh, it's sort of asking you to speak a little bit more about the politics of the book. Uh, you said in your comments, and this actually surprised me a little bit to hear, that you didn't think of this book uh, as a sort of political intervention per se, uh, that you didn't think that you were speaking out, bringing out the voices of, of, of the oppressed, although others have, have certainly read it that way. I, I read it that way. Um, I, I, so, so Mason asks if uh, you, you see the, the act of bringing these narratives to the fore as, of, as she puts it, as a form of resistance as a political act to let allow history to be written by the losers for a change uh, as opposed to as opposed to the victors uh, I mean I, I guess I surely you must have recognized that there was a political component to just writing and publishing this book well of course it was I, I knew it's going to be a very political book and uh, it's it's not an accident that there are money there are money not just mine, but there are many books on, on people's history, very different, but they are very different, but there are many, like, I, I think I can count of 15 or 20 of them are coming, uh, they are coming out at pretty much the same time in, in the last two years or so. Um, and I think uh, one of the important reasons is, uh, is that um, the, 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 the Polish intelligentsia, which I'm of course a part of, uh, I cannot, be someone else. I mean, <laughs> um, it is, so a lot of people wanted to understand the phenomenon of, of the uh, victory of law and justice, and, uh, uh, and, and they wanted to understand why uh, the rhetoric of, uh, uh, you know, giving back dignity to the people and uh, anti-allied rhetoric was so successful, because it apparently was successful. Uh, so uh, from this need to understand, uh, so I'm, as, as a historian and, and sociologist, I wanted to understand it as a, uh, uh, and you know, using the tools I have, um, that's, that's that's one and that's one reason. Um, the second uh, is that the Polish uh, history as as a whole, there are of course a very noble and notable exceptions, but the Polish history as a whole is extremely conservative. I think it's much more conservative than American uh, uh, historiography. 
and it's conservative both uh, in terms of methodology and po and in politics politics so it's very um, it's extremely nationalistic a lot of it a lot of it uh, uh, and the history of Poland is, is as as is, is uh, as it, it's told uh, most often is the history of kings, generals, politicians, mostly male, mostly male uh, uh, people from the upper one percent, uh, and this is national history. And the nation, from in in, in this conservative perspective, uh, is seen as a, a, as a, as a kind of extension of a patriarchal family. So you have these uh, uh, important males on the, on the top, rich, uh, powerful, they make all the decisions. Uh, so the focus should be on them and, and they constitute a, a core of the Polish nation um, and the rest somehow, especially the, the working classes, they somehow, you know, they fell out of a picture uh, because they are not really that important. Uh, forgive me, I have to switch on the lights. It's going to be better. Just a second. <laughs> Just a second. It's late in Warsaw. Yes, although we're it, uh, we're in that uh, rare time period where yeah. um, they okay. are not as okay. far ahead as usual. <laughs> okay, um, um, so, so that's uh, and my goal of of course uh, I'm I, I don't have a, a temper of a justice warrior. You know, it's uh, uh, so um, uh, and my ambition was not uh, to, to 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 give give justice to these uh, oppressed people, but rather to understand. Um, and uh, I, I, I tried very much not to idealize uh, the, the people I write about this. Uh, it's, uh, they were just, you know, giving the, it, 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 from my perspective, it was just a circumstances. If they were born um, uh, in, in, in the upper classes, they would behave exactly in the same way, um, it, like the people they were oppressed by. I mean, uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, it, but of course, they were suffering. Um, of course, there was a lot of injustice. Uh, uh, even if you understand justice uh, from the perspective of the of the period, uh, so not from our perspective, but in the his, it's, its historical context, uh, of course, there was a lot of injustice. And um, and uh, actually. Uh, 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 so, so to understand the political impact of this book, I think you have to, uh, to to look at it in the context of what is written about Polish history most of the time. So uh, it it wouldn't be as shocking in the United States or on the uh, Western market like you know, United Kingdom, uh, which had a long which has a long tradition of of, of fantastic research. Uh, and, 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 and Marxist historiography and it's, it's very rich and it's, it's very good most of the time. Um, and and there, there is much less uh, of this tradition in Poland, very little in the recent decades. So for, for a lot of people, this was shocking. This was really shocking. You can, uh, uh, and uh, um, uh, one of the conservative critics uh, wrote uh, uh, that uh, I'm like an, uh, let's say, agent for a Black Lives Matter movement in Poland. So I want trans, I, I, so that was the accusation uh, that I'm going to translate Black Lives Matter uh, uh, into the Polish uh, context. And of course, it was something scary and terrible and, uh, uh, and something to be ashamed of from his perspective. Well, that, that actually br brings up the, the next question that came up. Uh, which is somewhat uh, somewhat in this light, although from 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 a very different direction. So, uh, Kate Wrublewski uh, asks um, uh, about uh, the about the the concepts of uh, of peasant and the of a class other like peasant and then a racial other, uh, uh, as in African Americans in the United States. Um, that. Uh, I'll just I'll just read that as she words her question. Um, I, I take the com I, I take the comment on how this plays out on the right as an important corrective to nationalist models. But I also wonder how this plays out on the left as the slogan "Peasant Lives Matter" gains some traction. What then gets lost in terms of our ability to think about racial categories and racial divisions? And should we try to retain that difference 
Um, how would you respond to that? Okay, first let me say that, uh, let me stress that the, uh, the difference between lords and mass, uh, lords and peasants, lords, uh, lords and serfs was often uh, expressed in the racial terms. So in physical, and I mean, there are many uh, texts uh, with uh, uh, description, uh, descriptions of peasants and their facial features, you know, they, they look different, they have uh, uh, they, they, they have wider noses or, you know, less noble features of their faces. So there is a lot of it. There's a lot of it, e even in the 19th century. So it, it, it continues. Um, uh, uh, it, it lasts until, you know, 100 years ago, it stopped perhaps. It, it's, it's, it's very long. It's, it's a very long literary tradition. So um, there is certainly a, a common aspect. Uh, but fr from today's left perspective, I mean, in, in Poland, uh, uh, left is very much disorganized. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's marginal in the political life. Uh, when you look at the all power of the all polit leftist political parties combined, it's uh, 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 perhaps uh, five to seven percent uh, in the polls. Uh, and uh, the domination of the conservative narrative in the Polish political and social life is much more pronounced than in the United States. So uh, imagine uh, the history of the United States, which was written if when the southern states which won the war, you know, imagine that the South Confederacy won the war and then they write history. So that's the, that's the, that's the case, you know, you can compare it to uh, to, to what's happening in, in, in my country. Um, uh, it's, it's, I think uh, concluding and answering the question directly, I, I'm not sure we are that far in the debate in Poland at all. So it's uh, too far-fetched to ask this question. Hmm. Yeah. Although I just- I'm sorry, I, it, I'm it, sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, I, I understand. It occurs to me that, uh, that actually the events of the past several weeks have, uh, have brought us a, an entry point for a discussion of, of this question uh, in, in thinking about the way, the differential way in which uh, the migrants from the Middle East or North Africa have been received versus migrants from Ukraine. Uh, you know, in the Polish imagination, the Ukrainian being cast as a popular, group as a Ludove uh, uh, community uh, and yet being welcomed enthusiastically. So it seems that there is a, I know with qualifications, but it seems that there is some sort of racial differentiation that's happening even alongside the elite versus popular differentiation. Yeah, of course there is. Um, uh, I, I think I, I, I follow very closely the, the, the today's debate about the Ukrainian refugees. Uh, um, in uh, in Poland, and what is, is, is striking for me, what is uh, is that uh, despite all this solidarity, genuine solidarity, I mean, uh, uh, and 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 uh, lots of people help. Uh, um, uh, so despite all of this, there is uh, also a, a certain uh, a small, you know, small small trace of superiority in the way people mm -hmm. talk about Ukrainians. And uh, it's uh, there is I, I think it's something it's it's something mixed um, uh, it's a mixture of 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 um, uh, of class and et ethnic uh, um, ethnic difference uh, they are close to us but they used to be or I mean the Polish nobility uh, were the masters in the Ukraine for. Uh, 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 until the Second World War, in, in many places in the Western Ukraine, so it's it's it's, it's for for a few centuries. Uh, uh, so uh, there is something there is something to it, I think. Um, yeah. um, so um, an, a question from a different uh, direction. So uh, Kasia Kitlinska um, has uh, has asked, I think, a, a very um, a, a, a very interesting question for you to elaborate on something you said in your remarks a moment ago. You you said that you you did recognize that uh, that there are internal conflicts among the people uh, that uh, that are worthy of uh, of some uh, uh, you know additional study and additional description. Could you talk about some of those? Of course, and you know, the, 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 when you were at, for example, the, the, the pre-modern Polish countryside, I mean, uh, 
uh, it was very uh, it, it had a very extensive social hierarchy i mean uh, there was a huge social difference between a uh, rich peasant i mean kmiech which was called kmiech a rich peasant the the, the head of the uh, of the uh, large uh, uh, um, large farm and uh, the head of the family and uh, and uh, the poor or landless especially landless peasant it was a huge social distance and uh, people tended to be very often extremely brutal toward each other and uh, at the exploitation of, of uh, so, so this is the aspect of the social, uh, uh, I mean, the violence was pre prevalent also uh, in internal relations in the working classes, not just between uh, uh, the laws and, and, and the people, and, but also in, inside. And, uh, and it also prevalent in the family, uh, which is uh, probably not uh, not 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 uh, not written. Uh, it, it's not the topic of my book, actually. Uh, Katzper Pobotsky wrote uh, Hamstfo, uh, uh, which is uh, um, and he he actually focuses on on this 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 gender based not just class based violence but gender based violence. It's very important for him. It's an excellent book. I can I. I I'm, I, I really, I think it's it's fantastic, yeah. and it's worth reading. Uh, so, um, it's, 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 so in my book, I think this 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 violence and uh, relationship the relationships of, of of power inside the working classes they are very much underrepresented. That's the one of the point of 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 criticism I got. I, I can I can agree with. And uh, uh, looking from the perspective. I would probably, uh, uh, in in many many places of the book, I I, I wouldn't uh, in many sections I would probably uh, added something or you know put some. I I, I would add uh, it needs a study. It needs a study, mm -hmm. and um, so there is uh, not only uh, uh, the, the violence was on not only between masters and and serfs, landowners and serfs, but also inside the families and inside the, the working classes. So we have a question from uh, Cindy Sang, uh, asking you to talk a little bit more, uh, uh, again, elaborating on something you mentioned in your remarks uh, about uh, sort of your, uh, the actual process of your, of, of, of researching uh, for this book. You mentioned that you, um, you preferred, uh, you to use published sources and that you uh, didn't engage in much archival research for this book. Um, uh, actually, I, I know that you have done archival research and are certainly yeah, capable of it. So could you talk uh, uh, a little bit about the differences in doing uh, uh, writing history based on archival study and writing history based on uh, synthesizing published work? Well, I think when you it's, it's pretty obvious when you work on the archives, you have to you need to have a much more narrow focus. I mean, you cannot research everything, all the social history of Poland, uh, starting in the early Middle Ages. It's impossible for one person or perhaps even for a, for a team to uh, to research based on, uh, on, on, on archives. So uh, uh, I had to um, first I had to identify the most important published works on different subjects. And uh, there was a surprise when I tried to do it because some areas are incredibly under-researched. I mean, uh, for example, if you try to find works uh, on uh, uh, workers' history in published in, in the 19th century Poland, which were published in the last 30 years, there are only a few books, I mean, Two or three important ones, and and uh, um, uh, some 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 areas of social history of Poland are almost like a white, you know, like a white uh, white spots or how do you point it? How, how do you put it? White like you know, spots, it's, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. There are. It's, it's very difficult, and in, in some uh, some topics, uh, uh, the most on some topics, the only existing important really well done books were written in, for example, before the Second World War. There are also some, some I can give you an examples. So uh, it's, 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 really, uh, it's really surprising. Um, that's also, it's, it's, it's also a case of, of the peasant's history. 
uh, uh, two years ago, my, my colleague from uh, um, the Institute of History of Polish Academy of Sciences, Tomasz Wisic, who is a very good historian himself, um, he specializes in the history of peasants in the 17th and 18th century. Uh, and he, he, he organized a seminar uh, in, to which he invited all scholars he knew, and he knows everyone, uh, uh, who specialize in the peasant history. And it was like 12 people, like 12 people. And we had 1,500 academic historians in Poland working at the universities. So uh, and, and when you look at the published works, some topics uh, uh, in the rural history were not touched since 1960s or 1970s. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's really, so it was really difficult when I tried to uh, do my, uh, 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 to, to construct my narrative, I had to dig out these old books and some of them, uh, of course, were, were written from very different uh, perspectives and uh, you had to take it into account, of course. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that was complicated. So that's uh, is, 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 is coming back to the process. So you had to identify the most important works, try to read them, mm -hmm. and then to follow their sources. Um, uh, and it was a complex process. Uh, 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 which took me, I, I think, 10 years or eight years. I don't think so. I, 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 I lost, actually. Uh, it, it was a lot of work. Mm -hmm. um, so here, here's a, a, a question and comment from uh, Barbara Rilko uh, Bauer, uh, thanking, uh, thanking you for this uh, enlightening presentation and discussion. Um, that, Emphasizing again that just trying the mere act of trying to understand the lives and history of the 90% is itself an act of social justice. Uh, it just you know, is, uh, and that's uh, to be applauded. Um, uh, now she points out the that the responses to your book uh, uh, they, they they parallel a lot of the responses that have uh, come out in recent years to studies about the Holocaust. Uh, yeah. So I yeah you know, I. I I, I think of Jan Grabowski, I mean, Barbara emotions. Engel King, right? And and so why 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 would you say that uh, there the so many of the same people are giving the same reactions to books that really are dealing, you know, if if we just think of it from outside, that look like very different topics: popular history, the history of the Holocaust, uh, but yet they're evoking similar emotional responses in a certain type of reader. Uh, could you maybe talk about that? Why you think that is? Actually, it, it, it was tricky for me. I, I thank you very much for this question. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an excellent point, uh, an excellent observation. It was strikingly similar, I think, uh, uh, the reactions. Um, and, uh, um, uh, and I was actually surprised uh, by the similarities of the arguments which were used, uh, for example, against Jan Thomas Gross and, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and my book, for example, um, the same people were almost in the same sentence, often saying, oh no, we knew everything about it already. And uh, so there is nothing new in this book. And, uh, uh, but uh, there is something, you know, uh, ag aggressive and, and, and damaging for a Polish nation, national identity and, and, and so on. So I think the point is, and from the, uh, from the nationalist perspective, um, uh, the, 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 there is a myth of national solidarity in Poland. So we had this, uh, and uh, um, the idea of the, especially the pre-partition Polish society uh, as, a, as a society which was uh, very much, you know, uh, different classes had, 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 had its functions and they were living in a harmony uh, because everyone has knew his or her place in the society. So we had this, view of compl complementarity, is it a good word or? Uh, uh, um, okay, uh, so you, you have this, this view as of, of, the, of the traditional Polish society uh, as a harmonious uh, and united and without any internal, significant internal conflicts. And the same people often think that the, uh, so when the conflict come up, comes up and you cannot dismiss it or you know uh, you cannot uh, overlook it, it happens very often with the peasant 
mutinies or protests, they are not written about. They are simply uh, uh, removed from history. Um, uh, and uh, when, you cannot, when you can't do it, uh, so the, the typical explanation is that the, the, the conflict is, was, was started by, by outsiders, mm. either uh, foreign nationals or Jewish people. That's, uh, that's also two, two basic explanations. So we, live, we Polish people live in harmony, but if, some, if the harmony is, is destroyed, it's not our fault. It's not the fault of our nobility, for example, or anyone's anyone, and per, Polish person fault, but this uh, uh, you know, uh, Jewish or Marxist or whatever, uh, other people, other people, other people. So it's mm -hmm. all this, this, this external world in this optics, in this perspective, conspires to destroy the natural harmony of the Polish society. And uh, when you, uh, uh, when you, when you write that it was not so, uh, 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 so obviously, uh, it, it's not so obvious, uh, then the reaction can be very strong. Very strong, very swift, and and uh, uh, lots of yelling. Yep. Lots of lots of yelling. So we're all. No, no, but, but seriously, I got I got a lot. Of the, 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 it, it's it, when you look at the percentage of directions. So I got perhaps eighty to twenty, eighty percent positive, or and twenty percent uh, I mean negative, or um, uh, so it, it it was very so I, I'm. It was really very uh, well received, uh, mostly, mostly. Yeah, uh, that actually confirms, uh, that it corresponds to the reaction that I've received uh, as well, that uh, I, I think that this old narrative uh, is out there, it's strong, it's articulated strongly, but uh, really, you know, this, this that, that, there's a strong desire, it seems to be, in Poland right now, for for a new type of history. Uh, that uh, that the, and I wonder, if maybe just in the two minutes we have remaining, uh, that and I, I, my apologies to all those the many excellent questions here, and we will transmit those to uh, to Professor Lischinski, uh, but we're running out of time. But in it, why do you think? What is it about now? that makes it possible for books like yours, like Pobłocki's, uh, like, you like know, yours, like, like okay, yours. thank you. Uh, you know, that, that, uh, what, what, why this moment? What is it that makes, that creates a, a moment of reception for these arguments right now? Well, my hope, and my, my, I, I've been thinking about this, and my hope is that it's uh, actually predicts social change, which is coming. I mean, uh, um, so uh, I, I think it predicts uh, uh, in future what, Maybe in the next decade, maybe next, no, not next year, but next decade, we will see that the, this nationalist narrative is falling apart because it's not, it's not attractive for young people. It doesn't conform to their experience of, of, uh, of history and the experience of a society and they, 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 they sense it, they, 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 uh, the way they think, I mean, and, and feel. So uh, I, I think that the change is coming. So uh, the, the big social change is coming in Poland and it's going to be uh, less conservative, less nationalistic and more open than it used to be. And it, that, than it is now. What a wonderful way to, uh, to, to conclude on a nice optimistic note, maybe, maybe a rather un-Polish way to be optimistic, uh, but I, I think a, a delightful way to end. So uh, pass it back to uh, Genevieve. Thank you. Um, I like your I like your prognosis for the future. <coughs> Although one thing that we need to consider now is that you know with the war in Ukraine uh, and the fear of what is to come and what might come to neighbors, but also to Poland as well, that this might actually. You know, before we can go two steps ahead, we might have to go one step behind. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that the current situation is also likely to have an impact on nationalist feelings because fear is a very powerful uh, feeling. Um, but uh, with all said, um, I want to thank you both enormously for being with us today. Adam Leszczyński to discuss your book, uh, Ludowa Historia Polski. 
we didn't get to talk really about how you use the word lud, ludove, lud, you know, mm. and that's something that's actually, uh, if it gets translated into English, that will have to be really finely studied by the translator. Uh, we had a question by Patrice Dombrowski about this, and she, we will forward it to you. We didn't have time to, to talk about this, but I wanted to thank you for being uh, with us today and discussing your book, and to Brian Potoschutz for uh, his masterful um, you know, moderation of the discussion. Um, thank you everyone for being here with us today. And I want to advertise a couple events uh, that we have. The semester is coming to a close, um, but we invite you to uh, come and look at the Fiddler on the Roof uh, exhibition of Polish posters that we organized in uh, collaboration with uh, UMS, uh, who straight staged um, the musical. Um, we have on April 10th, it's a Sunday at 2 p.m., we're screening the film The Wedding Day, Vesele, directed by Wojciech Smarzowski, uh, which was also very controversial because it alludes to the program in Yedwabne. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can watch on our YouTube channel the annual Copernicus Lecture, which was a conversation with Ada, Anda Rotenberg that took place last Monday, as well as the WCEE teaching on Ukraine at took place on March 11th, and that should be on our YouTube channel uh, by Friday. Uh, so please um, come see the exhibit if you haven't seen it, come to the film uh, on April 10 and watch our events. And of course, if you like this event today, it will also be posted on our YouTube channel in a few days. So thank you everyone and have a wonderful um, end of the day. Thank you, Adam. Thank you very much for having bye me. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.